Hello, and welcome to The Connector. I'm your host, Dave Darrington, the Director of User Enablement here at Azuqua. This is a weekly podcast designed to connect you with the people who are building and using Azuqua each and every day. Featured guests may be members of our own team, or even you, our listeners. To begin, I'd like to share a bit about my background and why I'm excited to be part of the Azuqua team. I'm originally from Missouri, and I have a deep background in both science and technology. I've been part of several startups and have worked as a scientist, a business analyst, a project manager, and even a database administrator. But of all my roles, I found that what I enjoy most is learning about new products and teaching others how to use them. My last position was as manager of Gainsight's education services team, where we built out our training program from the ground up. Very much like Azuqua, Gainsight is a cloud-based technology platform, which is quite feature-rich. Now, what compelled me to join the Azuqua team is that Azuqua solved one of my own integration challenges, a personal challenge. In my case, I was trying desperately to bring data from an HR system back into Gainsight so that I could help direct employees to the training resources they needed most. Unfortunately, I encountered nothing but headache and manual processes. Now, our developers were obviously too busy to help, and it looked like I was going to have to write Python scripts from the ground up, but with a little learning, Azuqua solved my problem and completely automated my process. Now, with this story in mind, I believe that integration is as much about people as it is process. So, we'll apply the show me, the Missouri model, and teach you something new about Azuqua each and every session. Azuqua has many connectors, over 200 in fact. Focusing on all of them would be what's called a combinatorial explosion. So in this show, we're going to focus on practical examples of Zuka flows that real people are using. I listen to a lot of podcasts, shows like Bill Cushard and Sarah E. Brown's Helping Cell series or the Twit Network's Security Now series. I've also found that YouTube videos are a font of information, particularly about learning products. So to help you most, this show will be served in multiple formats. For those of you who are listening on your daily commute, subscribe to one of our feeds like iTunes, etc., and catch the latest episode in audio-only format. But if you prefer video format, such as you want to follow along with all the things we're doing on screen, then check out our YouTube feed. Regardless of format, we'll work to explain what we're doing in detail. If you're listening to this podcast, you could be in one of many different roles. For example, you could be an admin or operations person working with complex or challenging business processes. Azuqua is done with you, application administrators, in mind, with the goal of enabling you to get things done. Regardless of the application you're working with, with the right connectors, you can be successful. Now, if you find yourself commonly hitting a wall, which requires you to find developer resources to move data from one system to another, Azuqua is that tool that can help remove friction, preventing you from solving your own problems in the realm of IT. You can learn Azuqua. Like anything, when you log into Azuqua for the first time, you're going to feel like your kid self sitting in front of a vast pile of Legos. You can literally start anywhere with Azuqua. So between our podcast, our webinars, and soon-to-be upcoming curriculum, we hope to give you the resources that you need to become a master designer. This begins with your first card and your first flow. So start simple and grow your skills. Now let's take some time to go and build our first flow. And in this case, what I'd like to do is just show you, maybe for the first time, how I would construct a flow, what that flow means, and use some basic, very common connectors to get this done. So let me set the stage. First off, what I'd like to do in this case is something that's relatable. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and use Gmail. Email is something that's common to everybody, and Gmail is one of our connectors. And I'm going to use Trello. The use case here is that perhaps I have a team. Maybe I have a support team or a training team or some team that shares an email. And that team is very busy. So if we're all monitoring that email, and one comes in, who gets it, who assigns it, it can be confusing. So here, let's just do a simple case where I'm going to look at that email and I'm going to create a card in Trello and that card will be for my team to work with or process together in a shared context. Then when we get that email, everybody can archive it, etc. 
So very simple, Gmail, Trello, and I'm going to use Azuqua to solve the problem. Cool. Now let's go ahead and get started. We're going to create a new flow by clicking plus new flow. And in this case, what I want to do is have an event trigger, which is my Gmail app. So I'm going to look for a new email with a certain title. And my destination connector is going to be Trello. So let's begin by clicking Gmail. And in this case, I'm going to look for a new email. And what I want to do is create a function. In this case, I want a control function. Now, as you get to learn Azuqua, these will start to make a lot more sense. But right now, take my word for it, a control function is a way that I can look for a certain thing. In this case, what I want is a particular function called continue if. This will continue a flow if and only if certain criteria match. Now, in this case, the criteria that I'm looking for is that a subject, I'm going to drag the subject field over, is in, now you can get picky if you want to, in looks for something within a string. And then I'm going to say Azuqua bug. Okay, that's my right operand. Great, so then what this does is it says, if the subject contains Azuqua bug, then continue. Otherwise, just stop processing. Okay, so now in this case, what I want to do is add a new card to Trello. So what I'm going to do is click Add Action, select Trello from my connected apps, and then what I want to do is create a new card. A little further down the list, you could search for that if you choose to do, do so. Now in this case, I'm going to pull up my Trello board, and you can see my Trello board's already here. I've already tested this once, so I'm going to delete that so we don't have any confusion. And you can see I simply have a bug report Kanban chart. Nice little bug right here. I've got a backlog in progress and done. So what does that mean? Well, I want to put a new card in my Kanban board, and I want to choose my backlog, obviously. Okay. When I've set those options, I'll click Done. And then this is pretty simple. What I want to do is fill in the subject as the name of the card, and then I want the text body in the description. So I just simply drag those fields over from Gmail. So once again, going all the way through it, if I have a new email, I'll look at that and see if the subject matches what I'm looking for. If that matches, then I'm going to create this card pulling over the fields that I want. Great? Great. Okay, so in good cooking show format, I already have this staged and ready to go. So what I'm going to do next is actually create a new email. So in this case, I'm going to compose a new one. And I'm going to send this to Dave at Azuqua. Yes, that's my email address. And I'm going to say here, found a bug. I know, Azuqua bug. And then I'm going to say, hi team, I found a bug. Okay, simple as that. Now everything should be ready to go. I'm just going to click send and close that out. I should get a notification in just a moment that an email has arrived. Okay, now that I've received my email, I'm going to check for new data. Click the button, let this thing go, and you can see the magic is happening. What I'm looking at is my history. So this is executing in real time. You can see the little check marks indicate I've got data. It's received an email and actually can show all the details from that parsing. I can show all the details that come out of that. Here I can see my continue if has run. It matched my Azuqua bug in Azuqua bug. Great, that's one to one match. And now it goes to create my card. It pulls in the appropriate fields. Let's go see if that worked. So I'm looking at Trello, and you can see that I've actually run this a few times. It's worked. I can look at the last one, and here it is. You can see I've got text in here. My subject is correct. I could get more fancy in a pen, like a time date stamp and things like that to it. And that's it. It's as simple as that, folks. All you have to do is start playing around, and you'll see some results pretty quick. So in upcoming training classes and upcoming podcast, we'll get a little bit deeper into this. Whether you're joining us via audio or video today, note that the other versions are available and you can 
Find all the links to these recordings and show notes at azuqua.com slash resources. But don't stop there. If you haven't found Azuqua's community, you can also find it at azuqua.community.com. Our community is also a great resource for you to learn and to share what you know about Azuqua. And that's it, folks. Thanks for joining us on this inaugural session of The Connector. We hope you subscribe to our channel or download on your favorite podcatcher. Until next time, get out there and make some connections. <laughs>